the possibilities. Coming up live from the Carolina Newsplex. A suspended Greenville County School Board trustee spends the second day in court. The latest from Sherry Pace's fraud and forgery trial ahead in a live report. And the great Christmas tree caper, a holiday heist leaves behind some unhappy campers. This is News Channel 7 at 5. Good afternoon, I'm Pamela Grant. And I'm Carl Clark. Here's what's happening at 5 o'clock, day two of the trial of a suspended Greenville County School Board member. Sherry Pace faces forgery and insurance fraud charges stemming from a claim she made regarding a car stolen from her family business. News Channel 7's Brad Satin is one of the many people following this trial. He joins us now live from the Greenville County Courthouse with an update. Brad? Well, Pam, it's really been a back-and-forth type of a day, a lot of testimony today, but it's still moving, for the most part, pretty slowly. We thought we'd be wrapping up this case. Instead, it is still in the hands of the prosecutors. It hasn't even gone to the defense. Let's take you inside, show you some pictures of what went on today. The defense playing tough all day long, saying that while word of the car being found did get to Pace's car rental company, not one person could testify that they actually told Sherry Pace personally that the car had been found. The only evidence was a certified letter which Sherry Pace does admit she signed for but says she never actually read. In fact, the defense says the insurance company checks were not even made out to Sherry Pace personally, but to her family's rental company, and therefore there's not even any proof, they say, that Pace actually saw any of that money. But Sherry Pace eventually did return the insurance money, a total of about $13,500. But the question is, did she do it when she saw that police were already on to her? She claims early on, she did not know the car was found, but the big blow to her case came late this afternoon when an employee of her father testified that he told an agent, Joe Jordan, that Sherry did get word that the car was found and that Sherry allegedly ignored two certified letters. Did you tell Joe Jordan that Sherry said that she had received those letters which told her the whereabouts of the car? Yeah, that's what I said in my statement to her. Did she tell you anything about that her talking to her father about this? Well, she said that when he received the two letters, she said, Daddy told me to just ignore them. And was she upset at that time when you were talking to her? Yes, yeah, she had been. She was, was still... She crying? Well, she had been. That testimony late this afternoon, only about a half hour ago. The trial is continuing as we speak. Of course, we'll have an update tonight at 6. All thank right, you, thank you, Brad Satin. We'll get more at 6 o'clock. Thanks. In other news tonight, an elderly Anderson County man was killed early this morning in a house fire that gutted his home. Fire crews responded to this house located on Charles Reed Road in the Flat Rock Boland community around 5.30 this morning. The body of 79-year-old J.C. Walker was found near the doorway of the home. Investigators believe Walker may have sparked the blaze himself when he attempted to pour kerosene into a wood-burning stove. It was a crime that shocked the upstate. And this afternoon, the second man charged in connection with the murder of a Greenville motorist enters a guilty plea. Frank Angel pleaded guilty to the charge of accessory after the fact of a felony. The judge sentenced Angel to eight months in jail and then credited the sentence for time served, allowing Angel to be released. Angel was riding in a truck with Daniel Staggs in January when Staggs shot and killed motorist Danny Greer following an argument. And he later testified against Staggs at his trial. Staggs is serving a life sentence on murder charges. Authorities in Greenville continue to look for the person responsible for a shooting that left one man dead. The victim, Reginald Harley, was found in the parking lot of a furniture store on Green Avenue on the city's west side about 10 o'clock last night. Harley was taken to a local hospital where he later died. Tonight, police are asking for your help. If you have any information, call the Greenville Police Department, the number you see on your screen, 271-5333. Authorities are on the lookout for a man who got away with thousands of dollars from a Spartanburg clock shop. Clock gallery owner Robert Brooks says $18,000 was taken from the store's safe. He says he left the safe open, then went upstairs to repair a watch. While he was away, he says a man walked in, grabbed a bag of money, then ran. Just as I got by, he came out here. And so I looked in the safe, and as soon as he, just, before he got the heart out of the bill and looked at the safe, and I knew my money's gone. And we'll have more on the story, including Brooks' future plans, tonight at 6 o'clock. Okay, how about some good news tonight? Another international business is locating in the upstate. Eibel Cartex, that's an Austrian textile automotive supplier, will open its doors in January in Greenville. 
The company initially will employ 25 people from the upstate, but within five years, that number is expected to increase, increase to nearly 100. Company officials call Greenville the perfect location because it's close to automotive manufacturers such as BMW in Greer and the Mercedes plant opening in Alabama. Ivo makes fabric for automotive seat covers and door panels. The story of the Grinch that stole Christmas has a happy ending this afternoon. The folks at Camp Spearhead woke up Sunday morning to discover someone had uprooted and stolen their lighted Christmas tree. The camp, located in northern Greenville County, serves disabled children and adults. The word quickly got out, and thanks to the management and listeners of Whistle 100 Radio in Greenville, the camp has a brand new tree this afternoon, decorated with all the trimmings. Are you having trouble keeping up with what your kids are watching on television? Some help might be on the way. The television industry is expected to announce a new rating system sometime next week, and here's how it will work. Material rated K would be suitable for children of all ages. Shows suited to children seven or older would be rated K through seven. Other ratings would be TVG, suitable for all audiences, TVPG, parental guidance suggested. TV 14 would refer to shows deemed inappropriate for children under the age of 14, and TVM for mature audiences only. The system still has to win approval from federal regulators before it could take effect, possibly as early as next month. I think parents would vote yes. I think so. I think we'd be TVG, wouldn't we? Yes, we're TVG, Su suitable, suitable for, for all. Everybody. Yes. <laughs> There's still much more to come on News Channel 7 at 5. Searching for the best place to shop and ship those last-minute goodies for under the tree, consumer reporter Craig Smith goes in search of the perfect packing place to help you get your money's worth. And later, shopping for that do-it-yourselfer this holiday season, we'll have some expert advice, plus a chance for you to win some Christmas cash ahead in our Ask News Channel 7 segment. The lines are now open, so give us a call at 1-888-777.